In this video, I'm going to explain what my first week was like in tech sales. I'm going to tell you what you could expect for your first week, and I'm also going to explain different ways that I would use your first few weeks to really jumpstart your tech sales career, grow within your company, and then get promoted as quickly as possible. Now, if you're not super familiar with tech sales, I teach tech sales on this channel and the reason is because I've done everything under the moon in, in regards to trying to work for myself. I've had many businesses, I've had many successful businesses and I've really enjoyed doing those and working for myself for many, many years. But nothing, absolutely nothing can compare to working for a company that allows you to work from home. They give you amazing work-life balance. They allow you to make six figures a year. You can take off whenever you need to take off, and it is about as least stressful as possible. That is why I preach tech sales. That is why I teach it on this channel. I have absolutely nothing to sell you, so if you are interested in tech sales, uh, leave a like, leave a subscribe, and maybe turn on the notification button so you can see more of these videos. But that's not what this is about. Let's get into what my first week was like and what you could expect for your first week in tech sales. So when I started the first week, uh, and, it's, and definitely the first day, the, the, your company almost pays you to do absolutely nothing. So if you're not familiar with tech sales, it's a salary job. So that means you're not working hourly. You have a set salary no matter what hours you work. And so the first week, you're basically doing like absolutely nothing. Um, I'm going to tell you what I would do to still take advantage of that week. But essentially, your first day comes along and you've got your hire, usually maybe your hiring manager, the person that hired you, and they go and they introduce you to the team. This is all working remotely. So this, you know, my job is remotely. Most tech jobs are. If you were to work in an office, it might be a little bit different. But... Uh, the hiring manager went, introduced me to everybody else on the team. Um, so that would be the different SDRs, which are basically appointment setters, uh, different account executives, which are closers. They close new business. And then just getting you acclimated to the actual sales teams. They're going to throw you into all the new Slack channels, all the, um, it might be like your uh, your Google team, your your Microsoft Teams channels, all you know, however your company communicates. And you basically are just introducing yourself and getting to know your coworkers. Um, after that, you, you you do almost nothing for your first week. Really, your you know your first two weeks, all you're doing is you're introducing yourself to people on the team, and then you want to also shadow some people. And so what that looks like is whatever your role is. If you are hired as a sales to business uh, business development rep or a sales development rep, you're gonna shadow the other SDRs or BDRs on the team. Um, and literally what that looks like is you'll maybe carve off an hour, an hour or two every day with one SDR or one BDR. You're gonna Zoom with, you know, get on Zoom and they'll share their screen. And you basically just watch them work. Like that's literally all you do. Uh, they'll explain different processes, why they do this, why they do that. And you just kind of sit there and watch them work. Um, and then aside from that, you're really not going to be doing any work yourself for probably usually the first two weeks. You're just looking at systems. You're looking at uh, whatever software you guys use to send out your emails, whatever software you use if you want to do cold calls. And you're just getting acclimated to those systems. After you have a base level, they're going to start to teach you about the software. So they're going to say, hey, this is the, these are our customers. This is the problem that we solve for our customers. So this is the stuff that you're going to want to say whenever you're on the phone with a VP of marketing or with a marketing director or with a CEO. And you kind of just chill for that first two weeks soaking in all of that information. So your first two weeks on the job, they're almost paying you to do absolutely nothing. But I am someone who I jumped in right away. The very first month, um, I ended up leading the sales team in our sales competition. And how I did that, I'm actually going to share right now. And this is what I recommend doing for your very first week. What you want to do is you want to identify and you want to ask your hiring manager or your team leader or anyone like that. And you want to say, 
what other sales development rep or what business development rep, who is the best on the team? Who's putting up the best numbers? Who's doing it the most consistently? And you really want to find like the top two or three people and you want to ask them, you want to find those people, you want to send them a Slack, you want to introduce yourself to them, and you basically want to say, hey, um, obviously, I'm Jacob, I know that you kill it, I know that you're really good at what you do, I would love to set up some time to shadow you specifically and spend time learning from you and learning your process of things. And what they'll do, they'll set up a few hours that you can meet with them during that first week or two. And you want to soak up as much information as possible. So these are really good questions that I asked that if I were you, I would also ask. Ask these top performers. Say, what does your day look like? How do you lay out your day? What time do you start working? What time do you stop working? Do you take a lunch break? What time do you start sending your emails? What time do you do cold calls? What time are you not doing anything but researching prospects? All of those are very good questions to ask. And if you meet with your top two or three business development or sales development reps, a lot of times they're all going to have a little bit of a different answer for those questions. And so what you need to do is you need to say, okay, the top performer, he does emails at this time. The second best performer does emails at this time. The third best performer does emails at this time. And you basically need to look at how you want to run your day. How, how many hours a day you want to work? Do you want to start early? Do you want to start later? And you want to basically combine all of their methods into what's going to fit best for you. So for example, if the top performer gets up and sends emails at 6.30 in the morning every single day, but you know you don't want to be up before 8 o'clock or before 9 o'clock, you might not want to start sending your emails at 6.30 because you're going to crash by 8 o'clock or by 9 o'clock and then you're just going to nap for most of the rest of the day. But if the second best performer sends his emails or sends her emails at noon, that's probably something that's going to fit your schedule a lot better. So what I really recommend is speaking to these top performers, asking them exactly how they lay out their schedule and that is going to help you a ton in getting used to the role and in getting up to speed as quickly as possible. Aside from that, you need to ask them. Go to the top performers. Say, can I see the emails you're sending out? What are you saying in these emails? What does your subject line look like? What does your email body look like? What persona at the companies are you sending these emails to? Are you going straight for the CEO? Are you going for a sales manager? Are you going to a VP of communications? And whatever they're doing, they are the top performer. Emulate exactly what they're doing. So emulate their subject lines, emulate their emails. And there's nothing wrong with copying that at all. You work for a company, everybody's on the same team. You wanna drive more revenue for the company. It's not looked at as a bad thing for you to go and um, ask the top performer what they're doing and then do that. For example, at my company, I am one of the top performers. And so when we get new hires, and I teach them and I'm showing them exactly what I do. If I show them an email sequence that I'm sending out that I'm getting a lot of booked meetings with and then they go and they don't even use that email sequence and they make one up of their own and they don't book any meetings, I do not have a ton of respect for that because I'm like, hey, I'm showing you exactly what is working every day, every week, every month. You're basically just disregarding that and going your own path. And so you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for and you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time. So I say that just to say, go to the top performer, ask them what they're doing and do that and you will gain a ton of respect in your company. I absolutely guarantee it. So whatever emails they're doing, ask them how many emails a day are they sending? Are they sending 25? Are they sending 50? Do they prefer to send super hyper personalized emails or are they more generic emails that they're just sending to the right people? These are all questions that you need to be asking your top performers and then whatever their answer is, do it more than they're doing. So if they're sending 25 personalized emails a day, send 35, send 45. You, the, the coolest thing about tech sales is the harder you work, the better you're gonna make yourself look to your company and the more money you're gonna make. If you work an extra hour per day, that could literally result in you making an extra 10, 15, 25, $35,000 in your very first year. 
So for example, what my OTE was, what my on-target earnings was in my very first year in software sales, I ended up making about 30K more than what that was. And I was the highest, um, the highest paid SDR on my entire team. And that was with me only working 11 months of the year versus everybody else working 12 months. And that the, the process of how I got there was I literally found out what are the top performing people doing I basically did exactly what they were doing. I added a little bit of my own twist to it and I sent out more emails than they did. I did more calls than they did. I did all of that. So that's my biggest tip to actually gaining success as quickly as possible. But the biggest thing that I can also tell you is just be coachable. Like don't be set in your ways. Literally just listen to the top performers say why do you do this okay I don't necessarily agree with why you do this could you explain to me a little bit better why you think you know I trust you you're a top performer so I know you're probably right and I'm probably not can you just explain to me a little bit of your method you know, method of doing this and um, that'll be very well received what I the biggest thing that I could tell you find the top performers at your company um, gain as much product knowledge about what your software is as quickly as possible and then within your first two weeks, you should be ready to go. You can start sending out emails. You can start doing cold calls and really just making extra money, getting your commission, booking more meetings, getting some deals under your belt. Um, and then from there, the sky really is the limit. But your first two weeks in software sales, it's very, very laid back. You don't have a ton of expectations set on you. So you could literally do next to nothing, but I don't recommend doing that. I recommend pushing hard finding your top performers, learning from them, getting set up as quickly as possible, and really just making a name for yourself uh, within your company. So I hope that answers some questions. People have asked me, what does it look like your first few days? It's very chill, very laid back. The cool thing about these companies are um, that they, they, you don't have a boss like creeping down your back, like making sure you're doing something every hour of the day, every second, every calculated minute. It's not like that. You're an adult and they treat you like that. Um, and that's why I love software sales. You get the ultimate freedom, um, but the best reps, they don't take advantage of that freedom. They don't go take a nap just because they don't have anything to do all day. Um, they don't just take the day off. They, they grind and they work. So that's what I recommend you doing. So I hope this answers some of the questions I've been getting. If you have any more questions about software sales, drop them in the comments below. I look forward to answering them. And of course, I always look forward to hearing from you. So thank you so much.